Okay. Um, my research project primarily focuses on studying these um, 20 amino acid peptides. So the sequence of these molecules are um, designed to have alternating hydrophobic valines and uh, hydrophilic lysines together with a tetrapeptide turn sequence in the middle. And uh, these peptides are designed so that when they are dissolved in neutral pH solution with low ionic strength, they are unfolded and of random coil conformation. But once there is uh, an external stimuli, like um, the increase of um, ionic strength or raise of temperature or pH, these uh, molecules intramolecularly fold into a beta hairpin conformation that further self-assembles both laterally and vertically into a fibrillar um, three-dimensional um, cross-linked hydrogel network stabilized by physical cross-links only. And uh, here is an example of a hy hydrogel. It's a solid maxate peptide hydrogel formed in a syringe. And uh, when I reverse the syringe, um, because the hydrogel is a solid, it's self-supporting. So you don't see any flow of the material when I reverse the syringe. And uh, there are interesting mechanical properties about this uh, hydrogel is because uh, once a proper shear stress is applied onto this hydrogel, for example, injection shear, the gel will shear things and flows like a low viscosity material. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So, so the shear thinning property of the hydrogel allows it to be um, delivered to a targeted site with a simple syringe injection. Yeah, it's like this. And uh, the gel has immediate recovery properties right after injection shear was seized because um, when I just reverse the plate, you don't see any flow of the material. In order to elucidate uh, the underlying mechanisms of gel shear thinning and self-healing, I use a combination of techniques, for example, including rheology, uh, neutron scattering, and a small angle X-ray scattering in order to study the hydrogel behavior during and after flow. And uh, it was found that actually the hydrogel shear thinning and self-healing properties were due to the hydrogel network structure evolution during and after shear. So it is explained in this simple model that the application of injection shear fractured the original um, hydrogel network structure into domains that allow these allow the hydrogel to flow like a low viscosity material. Uh, right after injection shear was seized, these domains are immediately percolated, forming um, a network that leads to an immediate recovery of a solid hydrogel. And the gel stiffness is quickly restored over time through relaxation of the network structure at the boundary of these domains. And uh, these unique mechanical properties of our hydrogel indicate that uh, they can be really good candidates for injectable therapeutic delivery because we can easily encapsulate the desired therapeutics during initial hydrogelation and the gel shear thinning properties allows the gel and the encapsulated therapeutics to be delivered to a targeted tissue defect site within human body. And the immediate gel recovery property allows the encapsulated uh, therapeutics to remain localized where it is introduced without spreading to other parts of the body. And importantly, we have already validated that the gel shear thinning and the rehealing properties have little impact on cell viability and cell spatial distribution um, of the encapsulated uh, cells after syringe injection. So therefore, uh, our, um, these uh, findings uh, validate that our hydrogels can be excellent candidates for injectable therapeutic delivery and tissue regeneration scaffolds. Uh, my name is Tong Chi, and I work in um, Dr. Professor Pochen's group. So my uh, my focus of research is basically just uh, investigating the mechanical behavior and their structural evolution of the hydrogels 
in order to validate their, they have really promising applications in biomedical um, biotechnology, for, for example, injectable therapeutic delivery and tissue regeneration substrates. Uh, and my name is Hong Chi. I'm a graduate student working in Dr. Pochen's uh, lab. And I, um, my research primarily focuses on um, studying the mechanical properties of these hydrogels in order to validate they are really, they can, they have a really promising future application for um, biotechnology.